Good morning, and welcome to Mission Trip Sunday. Um, you're going to be hearing from just over half the kids um, this morning um, as they reflect back on our trip that we took at the end of June, so that will be coming up later in the service. Um, there will not be um, Sunday school a day, the kids will stay in the service so they can listen to that. Um, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. stumble and 
and trip and fall, but you are right there to pick us up. We get off of paths of righteousness, paths towards your kingdom, but there you are as our good shepherd, steering us back. And so we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful world, for your goodness deep inside us, for magnifying that goodness by coming to us in your son, Jesus Christ. He is the light of all life. And he can never be extinguished within us, Lord. We take time now, Lord, to remember how we've just, uh, we've just left you in your presence. We've allowed um, the enemy to come and weigh us down with guilt and shame and fear and anxiety and wrongdoing, Lord. Um, and yet, there you are, Lord. You um, took on all of our sin on the cross so that we might be dead to sin, so that we might know, Lord, that we are forgiven and that you have cleansed us and made us new. So we take time now to, to bow before the cross of Christ Jesus and give to him the things that are weighing us down. Hear now our silent confessions. nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare you're our living hope your presence Lord I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence lord holy spirit you are welcome here come flow and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence Aware of your presence, 
let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become before the Lord confessing our sins and doing that the, the mercy of the Lord which is from everlasting to everlasting is upon us so know that you are forgiven and be at peace and share that peace with each other and the world Okay, if you'd like to make your way back to your seats and take a seat. Some announcements this morning. So we have VBS is kicking off tomorrow. Finally, we're excited. We've got 50 kids coming to our doors tomorrow morning. So it's going to be a good week. Um, so prayers for next week. Um, at next Sunday, it's going to be VBS Sunday, um, where you'll get to come and enjoy a bit of the VBS experience. Um, even though you will not have been there next week on Sunday, you'll feel like you've been there. Um, I know it says in the bulletin it's like a, a farewell to me next Sunday, even though it's an official farewell. I'm still going to be around for a little while because of some delays with my, um, with my house. So um, it's not a true farewell. I'm not gone, gone. You'll see me for the ne next couple of weeks into August at least. Um, and as I was thinking about that this morning, um, you know, a big theme of the mission trip and something that we're going to be talking about at VBS next week is this idea of God sightings. Um, and the idea of a God sighting is that you will look for the ways that you see God in just the everyday. Um, and as I was thinking about that this morning, I feel like um, it's something we've been talking about in my Bible studies this year with my women and uh, my Gen X people. Um, we did it on the mission trip. We're going to be focusing on VBS. Um, this morning, the first song we sang, um, Blessed Be, um, that song is like a special one personally for me because that was a worship song that um, like was kind of got me through a very dark time when I was younger. Um, and right now I'm kind of going through a bit of turmoil in my life right now. So it was just, I felt kind of God coming in and speaking to me in that. 
Um, and then the second song was all about, you know, becoming aware of God's presence. Um, and it just made me, I feel like God was very saying very clearly that, you know, we, unless we're paying attention, unless we're pushing into God, we don't give ourselves the opportunity to see the ways that God is moving in our lives. Um, you know, when I was younger, if I didn't really press into that song and really press into God in that, I wouldn't have had a moment right now, 15 years later, where I'm experiencing God from something that I experienced when I was 14, 15 years old. Um, so I felt like God just kind of moving me to say that continue to look and press into God in the mundane in your everyday because you never know at what experience five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, you're going to be sat somewhere and God's going to speak to you through experiences you've had in your teenagehood, in your 30s, in your 40s, in your 50s. So look for God's sightings in your everyday so that you give yourself the opportunity to experience God in your everyday. Other announcements. We have got some fruit and some potatoes for you to take this morning from the food bank. Um, the food bank is low on cereal, so if you have some boxes of cereal, if you're like me, you, you go in the grocery store and you see all the cereal and you're like, ooh, I think I'm going to get some cereal, but then you never actually eat it like me. Um, and you're like, you know, what? I've got some cereal in my house. I've not opened. Bring it over to church. The food bank will take it. You know what? At the end of VBS, we actually take a special food bank collection on Friday. So if you kind of want to just throw into that collection, because um, they're low on a lot of stuff, um, feel free to drop some stuff off at church this week, because um, I will be doing a collection this week for the food bank. Um, fellowship for the midday folks, Tuesday, July 18th. Is that Ben? What day is it today? Okay, so in two days, I'm close. So in two days, y'all have got some uh, fellowship going on. Um, so let David know if you can or cannot be at that. Um, and I think that's generally it for announcements. Anyone? Oh, yep, Chris. All right, so juice on the lawn has been moved inside because Chris was so kind as to not let you be soaked this morning in the beautiful weather. So um, enjoy some um, fellowship after the service in the back. Anyone else? All right, I'm going to invite the kiddos forward for the children's message. First thing I have to do is read from the Acts of the Apostle, the first chapter, um, verses six through eight. So listen for God's word to us today. Uh, so when the disciples and the risen Jesus had come together, uh, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set up by his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Um, so we went on a mission trip. I'm gonna try sitting down. Um, I can relate to, I was relating to that same song. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name, um, I hurt myself on the mission trip. There was pain in the offering. I'm going to try and sit down for a little while, and we'll see how it goes. But I'll probably be getting up and moving around, jotting here and there. Whoever's up there on the camera is going to have to chase me around. Um, welcome, by the way, to all of you who are online as well. So. Um, we went on what is called a mission trip, Sarai, and uh, a mission trip is when you're, you're, you're sent out into the world to do God's work. So we went to Pittsburgh, um, which is like six hours away, and, uh, and we helped people who are struggling, um, struggling in mind, struggling in body, struggling in spirit, sort of having a hard time in some way or another, or helping the organizations that help those, those people. Um, and our group, which was about 11 
with Lauren and me. There was 11 of us. Um, we had to split into two groups, and one of the groups uh, went to a food pantry, just like Andrew leads our food bank here at the church. And uh, they helped distribute food one day. They helped to build some things. They built a desk. And by the way, the girls did a much better job building the desk than the guys did. That has to be um, announced. Amen. Uh, and uh, did you guys do some painting too? No painting. They did a bunch of kits and things like that. And our group, we went to a restaurant. It was a really special restaurant where people can pay whatever they want to pay or whatever they can pay. Um, so the wealthy, if they have more than enough money um, to pay for their meal, they can pay more. And uh, through paying more than the cost on the menu, they can feed the people who are hungry and poor because poor people come into the restaurant and they can order um, anything on the menu and pay what they can. Um, so they can pay $3 if they want to get anything on the menu or if they don't have any money, um, they can get a free complimentary meal as well. So it's a really, really special place. And uh, we were bussing dishes and we were waiting on people and we were cleaning off all the tables. And um, so all these things that we were doing weren't particular. The one thing that was particularly not special to me was the first day that our group served. We had to stay in the church that we were staying at and we had to declutter a room and the room was just filled with junk. And I thought, here I am on a mission trip, and I have to do the thing that I least like doing, uh, which is cleaning up and organizing. But guess what? As we were doing it, as we were pulling out all of this stuff from this room, and by the way, we took executive decisions to decide that some of this stuff was not needed any longer, and decided, yep, this is definitely, they had like, uh, you know those cardboard poster tubes? They had like 200 of those cardboard poster tubes. I thought, who needs 200 cardboard poster tubes? We're getting rid of some of these. Um, some things were literally like crumbling as we're pulling them out. They've been in there for like 20 years. So as we were doing that, it uh, became more and more meaningful. And when we were done, and we had this wonderful clean space, and we remembered that we were helping this church to move, because in fact they were gonna have to move to a different place in like two or three months. It really felt worthwhile. And in general, all the things that we were doing were not particularly like, you know, special. They were just regular sort of ordinary tasks, things that you do at home when you do your chores. But guess what? Everything felt really special. So why did everything feel so different to us? The reason was because we knew why we were there. We were there on a mission trip. The Holy Spirit of God has sent us to Pittsburgh to do this work. And so we knew that there was purpose in everything that we were doing. And the reason that we were reminded, we were reminded of the purpose in everything that we were doing every single day by everything else that we did. Because we would serve for like five or six hours a day. But the reason it felt so meaningful while we were serving, first of all, I need to talk about the people that we met. The people that we met were very, very special people. And they blessed us as much as we blessed them. So that's one reason it was very, very moving and powerful. But the reason these sort of daily unusual tasks felt so special is because of everything that we were doing every day. We would worship two times a day, reminding us why we were there, singing and praising God and dancing and shouting sometimes and, and listening to the young preacher. We were uh, breaking bread. Every meal we would come together and we would um, eat together and talk about our days. And uh, in the church, this is called communion. Um, the very first thing is we were together. We were together. And, and that's, what, that's what church is. Church is the gathered people of God. That's what the word means in the Greek. Ecclesia means the gathered people of God. And so I think the, the foundation of everything being so meaningful was that we were together. 
We were sharing life. That's another thing. The fellowship means sharing life together. We were hanging out. We were um, laughing together, talking together, just having a good time. Um, and then uh, we were breaking up into small groups and studying. Um, we were thinking about what the preacher had to say and, and reading Bible passages. And all these things was just a constant reminder that everything that we were doing had a purpose. And, and that's true in general. Our lives are one big mission trip for God. And every single day can be like every one of those days that we had up in Pittsburgh. Cleaning your room, Sarai, can be just like decluttering at the church. Because our God is a God of order. God wants things to be orderly in our lives. He, he made the entire universe and he made the planets to, to go around the stars in perfect order. Um, and he wants that order in our lives as well. And so when we clean our rooms or when we wash dishes, which is another thing we did while we were on this mission trip, um, we build up health and we build up order in our community. Um, when we build stuff, they built a desk. Whenever you get together, when, when something comes in the mail, like a new toy or something, and uh, dad is struggling to put it together, um, as I did, the things from Ikea, when you come together and help out, that is a God moment. Because you're together with your mom and dad, you're learning something, and you're making something that can be useful for your family. You can use it to God's glory. So basically, the reason that everything um, just felt meaningful and good and joyful was because we were doing, thing, doing everything in the light of God, right? We were doing everything for the glory of God. And the way that our days can become like every day on the mission trip is by doing the things that we did every day. Worshiping every day, studying every day, serving people on a regular basis, basically remembering God, remembering that God has called us to the work that we are doing and that in the work that we are doing, we can bless others. And whatever it is that we're doing, we're making is a blessing to others. As we remember that, the work becomes meaningful. Um, and when it's sort of just a challenge and a burden, we can endure because we remember that God is the one who is calling us to this work. Uh, so um, it's hard to come back from something like that. I don't know if it's been hard for you guys, kind of like after the high of um, experiencing that. Uh, to then come back to regular life is, is a bit challenging. Uh, and the disciples were feeling that way. They had experienced the glory of God in Jesus. And then all of a sudden, Jesus has died up on the cross. And they're afraid that everything's going to go away. And then Jesus rises. And Jesus appears to them. And they say, Jesus, is now the time when you're going to make everything perfect? It was so great when we watched you heal people and feed people and welcome people and just love people and forgive people. Now is that the way it's going to be everywhere for everyone? And Jesus said, you're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to wait. That's going to happen in God's time. But in the meantime, you are going to be my witnesses. And a witness is somebody who tells the truth about something. Okay? That's what a witness is. And so he says, all those things that you saw me do, you're going to tell the world about them wherever you go. But you're also going to have to wait. You're not going to constantly be talking about me. And what you're going to be doing is what we did. He said, wait in Jerusalem. And what did they do? They prayed. They broke bread. They worshipped at the temple. They went to one another's homes and enjoyed each other's company. And they had fellowship. And they sang and they danced and they prayed. And then they went out and they served. So um, to the youth, who are all going to be seniors this year, my charge to you 
is to continue to lead in the ways that you have been leading. And this goes to the boys who are going to watch later on. They better anyways. Um, keep leading. Keep doing the things that you've been doing. Keep coming to worship. Keep leading us in song and dance and praise. Um, keep going to youth group this year. I know how busy you are your senior year, but keep coming and be an example um, to the younger high schoolers and to the middle schoolers. You've been an amazing example to them already, and that needs to continue um, because they need to come to know the purpose for their lives just as you are coming to know the purpose uh, for your life. Um, and I say the same to everybody out there. Um, we need you to keep leading. Um, I want you to just remember that every day um, is an opportunity to remember God and find meaning in the work and the rest and the play that you do. Um, and then come together. Be the ecclesia. Be the gathered people of God. Um, share fellowship. Join the fellowship events. Um, come and join the, the Gen X Bible studies and the women's Bible studies. This is the same reason we had such a meaningful time on the mission trip is the exact same reason why the women had such an amazing time when they were at the retreat at Johnsonburg. Because they were, they were living the way that God calls us to live, in fellowship with one another, doing stuff together, worshiping together, caring for one another, praying for one another. This is a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven. And the more that we come together and we do these things, the more that our lives are going to be perfected. The disciples were like, is everything going to be made right now? And Jesus said, just wait and be patient and, and remember me and witness to me. When you do that, your lives are going to become better and more fulfilled. Um, and we need to make sure, we need to make sure that Sarai and Connor and all of the little ones, all of the babies and the toddlers, we need to make sure that they come to know that their entire lives are filled with purpose, that their entire life is a mission trip to the kingdom of heaven, and that they will do wonderful things for God. We need to make sure that happens in this place, which is in the very heart of plains and has been here for going on a hundred years. Let's do that, making sure that the children and the youth and the adults of this community as well remember the purpose for which they were made and glorify God through their words, their deeds, and their thoughts. Thank you for listening so well, Sarai. You are very good. Stopped getting your attention, but you are wonderful. So to the God who uh, calls us to, to witness to Jesus Christ, the one who died to put to death all of our sins, and the one who was risen from the grave, to him belongs all the honor, the power, and the glory now and forevermore. And God's people say, amen. Um, I am going to start with uh, what Dietrich had to say, and then move to them. We're going to listen to what the kids experienced and some of their memories. So we met a woman every day at the restaurant whose name was um, Becky. Becky was a very special woman. She worked at the YMCA. And she came in uh, for brunch every single day. And she was so kind and was such a joy to talk to. And Dietrich's special memory was this. He said, it was great to talk with Becky about appreciating the smaller things in life and being grateful for being alive at all. So that's Dietrich's memory. Uh, and whoever's next in the order can come up. One of my favorite memories from the mission trip was when we broke off into like our groups 
and we all went to different sides. Like some went to the cafe and some went to the organization. I went to the organization and it was so nice to see how like we just take for granted our everyday routines and people don't have the same routines as we do. Like they were so they're so much different than ours. And the organization that we worked at helps people who need food and just like basic living things. And we done like volunteer work like this before, like in our own community, going to like the plain field, like food groups and everything. But we never saw like a community like that before that like really puts work and effort into helping their community grow better. And they want to see people who are less fortunate grow and aspire to do different things than what they have. So it was really heartwarming. Although we help others a lot, it's also it puts into perspective how much like we're blessed and how much we take for granted like in our everyday lives like waking up brushing our teeth going to school like a lot of the people that we met don't have the same education that we do so seeing how like different worlds can be only a few hours away was so like eye-opening and it really brought like a new perspective to our life Um, when I f first decided to go on this mission trip, I was definitely a bit unsure of what I'd encounter. And after seeing the food situation and the shower situation and the Wi-Fi situation, I was certain that I wouldn't survive the week. Um, but I'm glad I stuck with it because I had a lot of amazing experiences that I think I'll carry with me forever. Uh, during the week, my group was assigned to serve in the community cafe. And this really emphasized for me that God can be visible in so many different ways. And I think the biggest way I saw God was in the people I met in the cafe. Um, there were so many people from so many different life situations, and some of them were even receiving the free meal at the cafe. And I think despite whatever hardships people were going through, everyone was so nice. And you could definitely tell that there was a real sense of community that everyone participated in. People that I'd never met before wanted to know my story, where I came from, and even just how my day was going. And I feel like this helped me to break out of my shell as an introvert because the more answers I gave, the more questions I asked, and soon I was finding out so much more about these people that I previously considered strangers. Um, I loved seeing how much the regular volunteers as well cared. They remembered everyone's names, where each person liked to sit, and what kind of meal everyone would get. And aside from our projects, I also really saw God in our interactions with each other. Um, I won't lie, we definitely had our fair share of arguments and disagreements um, that week. But I think by Wednesday night, you could definitely see a change and our bond became stronger than ever. Um, that night, we were encouraged to share some of the struggles and things we were going through. Uh, I think we all shed a lot of tears that night, but it was amazing to see how many of us were willing to open up because I think that vulnerability is a re really important skill that we definitely don't practice enough and I think overall the biggest lesson I learned from the mission trip is that um, God chose himself again through so many different ways like the relationships and bonds that he puts in our lives and it's so important to be open to new experiences and open to vulnerability so that you get to know people know their stories and understand that everyone's going through something For the longest time, it's been a goal of mine to dedicate a week of my time to go on a mission trip. As someone who's only grown closer to God as I've gotten older, my aspiration and desire to help others while also spreading God's word has always been a prominent thought that I so badly wanted to pursue. It would be an understatement to say I was grateful to have the opportunity to go on this mission trip, but add in this mix of people especially and there are no words to properly express the gratitude I feel. Throughout the mission trip, we were split into groups which would then be assigned to different sites. 
My group's designated site was a family center who primarily worked to provide necessities such as toiletries, clothing, and food to those who struggled to obtain them themselves. Within our groups, each team member was assigned a role. Though different, each role was important in its own way, like Michael's role, which was to pack our lunches and ensure we were the most hydrated we've ever been in our lives. I think it's safe to say no one was dehydrated. Or Charlotte's job as first responder, where she carried probably the smallest first aid kit I've ever seen and made sure Michael received the Band-Aid for the cut you probably would have needed a microscope to see. Yet my role was to keep track of God sightings. If you've never heard of this before, God sightings are moments in your life where you see God working or can recognize a sign in your surroundings that is somehow special to you. I'd like to share a few of these prominent God sightings from my week in Pittsburgh. Walking up to our site on the first day was a little nerve-wracking. We were excited but unsure of what to expect. As we arrived at the family center door, sitting right outside was a small rock garden where some of the kids at the center had painted their own rocks and set them out for display. Right in the center of all the rocks sat one with a cross. This was sighting number one. One of the next days, our site leader informed us that we'd be helping at a food distribution. Personally, I think this is one of the hardest days for me. As each person or family came to acquire their box of goods, the distress and defeat on some of these people's faces hurt to see. I, especially, I specifically recall one of the first groups to arrive. It was a middle-aged girl and her mom, as well as the girl's baby. You could tell as they walked up, they were tired and probably losing hope. But despite this, the baby was lively as could be, smiling as we waved to her and just filled with happiness. This was sighting number two. Though they were beat up and demoralized, their baby was a constant reminder of the hope that they, uh, and the hope that, and happiness that God was soon to provide them. Last but not least, one of our final days at our site, our group leader brought us to a local coffee shop to collect food bank items, but also grab a quick bite to eat or a refreshment. Upon our arrival, a lady inside insisted on buying all of our drinks. No matter how many times we insisted that it was okay, she was firm on her desire to pay. Come to find out, this lady was the mother of a regular at the family center. This was sighting number three. We knew how little these people who visited the center had, and this lady especially knew it firsthand. She had experienced the struggle to provide for herself and her family, yet she made it, it made her even more selfless. She wanted to share whatever she could. Though I could go on about this mission trip forever, I'd like to conclude with a Bible verse that I feel encapsulates the theme of this trip as a whole. As Psalm 23, 4 says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. No matter what struggles we go through or hardships we face, God is always with us and supporting us. Besides the deflated air mattress, little to no water pressure showers, and the soggy food, I would say the mission trip was pretty enjoyable. The week-long trip taught me a lot, not only about my faith, but about myself. The trip had an underlying theme of forged, the act of breaking or weakening something for the final goal of making it stronger in the long run. This not only connects to metal, but personal journeys as well. The suffering that one goes through becomes all the more worthwhile when the realization hits of it making you and your mindset much better. To be completely honest when I say this, this is my third time writing this, for I'm not entirely sure how to use the correct words to sum up the impact of my week and the effect that it had on me. Whether it was talking about the work of the trip itself or what I personally got out of it, I had no idea what path I wanted to take. Nevertheless, the one single thing that didn't seem to leave my mind was the idea of privilege. Over the course of the trip, the group that I was placed in helped out at a family center, meant for those that needed basic necessities for their home, food, baby formula, clothing, hygiene products, etc. Helping out with the center made me realize how much I am genuinely grateful for and how many things I'm given on a daily basis that doesn't cross my mind, but is the most important thing in someone else's. Sadly, we live in a world where not everyone is granted a roof over their head, a comfortable bed to retreat back to after a long day, the ability to go out to eat every night with friends, or even drink a refreshing ice cold water when thirsty. While this trip was dedicated to coming to terms with your own suffering, I felt myself often thinking about how much worse it could be and how instead of complaining and dragging myself down, I should take a step back and realize the opportunities I have been given and how people, just as deserving, aren't given the same. I think a lot of the time I'm very caught up in my own mind when I'm upset that I tend to not stop and think about the support systems that I have built around me. I am blessed with an amazing family that loves and cares for me dearly, friends that will bring me food and single-handedly pick me up when I'm feeling down, and youth pastors and other supporting adults that are always there simply for guidance and trust. Being in an area that is much unlike our own, with people that do struggle daily to support their families, is an unfamiliar, upsetting experience. 
Although I know the work that we were doing was helping them, the thought in the back of my head of how these people actually lived stayed with me as well. In my opinion, a lot of the time when passing by a less stable area or seeing someone homeless from time to time can be shocking, but the grief that you feel when passing by shortly leaves after be distracted, being distracted by something else. I feel as though that is why it is so important and extremely amazing that there are places and people that do take the time to help out. Instead of being consumed by their own lives and their own personal wealth, these people dedicate themselves to giving to those who have much less. Instead of just keeping their heads down when passing by, they step into action and figure out what this person needs in order to continue to survive. That is what I took most out of this trip. Gratitude. Who, to those who do lend a helping hand. The job that is oftentimes put off by so many. It shows signs of hope. I'd like to continue to tell myself that the struggles that these people are going through connect back to that main message of Forged, and that they too will finally find a way to live happily without having the worry of their stability. I am extremely grateful for the life I have been given, and this trip has taught me to not look at someone based on their personal wealth or home situation, but to look at them as human, because God has created us all to be equal, to all be simply human. So just as these kids gave back for an entire week, it's time for us now to give back. We have been blessed. God's abundant blessings have been poured out upon us um, spiritually, financially, physically. Um, so let us uh, return to the Lord, um, the blessings he has given us. And uh, not only um, financial offerings, but the offerings of our lives and labor, saying, here I am, Lord. How can I help? While we do so, uh, let's stand and sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. All your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God your goodness is running after, it's running after me. 
your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let us pray together. Oh God, you have been so, so faithful over all our lives from the very first breath we take to the last one. You are always so, so faithful. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you that we can gather together and we can praise your name in health, strength, in weakness, in sorrow, in every part of our lives, we can gather together with you and with your people. And we are so, so grateful for that. Lord, we lift up before you concerns on our hearts. We pray for those who've asked for our prayers, you know they are. We pray too for our Vacation Bible School coming up. We thank you for the children you've entrusted to our care. We pray for the safety of all that will be around, for the volunteers, for the lives that will be changed. We thank you for the privilege of gathering together. We pray together, we pray also for those that we know and those in our nation who are suffering from extreme heat, too much water, too much wind. Lord, just be with them, help them. We pray too for our leaders we ask that you would give them wisdom, Lord, that you would help our leaders to listen to you, that you would guard them from, from speaking words of anger that seem to just be part of our public discourse these days. Lord, help us and help them to listen to you. And we pray too, we thank you for those that protect us, that give, that give their lives, fighting fires, standing guard in police situations, our military. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for those servants that you've given to us. Be with them, be with their families. And we, we bring before you with our voices raised or uh, silently, the concerns of our hearts. I pray for Jenny Krause, that you would continue to heal her and 
help her to accept her new home in Michigan. Lord, thank you that you hold all things in your hands and that as we turn to you and trust in you with every part of our lives, you never leave us, you never forsake us. And we pray together the prayer you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, 
of heaven you conquered the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things Pastor Ken has our charge and benediction. Just a postscript. We served about 65 folk yesterday for the food pantry. But as was said before, we need cereal. So go to Aldi's, go to ShopRite, get something for you and something for us. Let us go forth. Remember, our lives are mission. And when you and I have those days where we say, God can't use me, guess what, sports fans? God does use you. And I want to thank the youth. I want to give them applause again. We have some goodies in the back. Let us go forth to the praise of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.